St. Paul's to me means family. It means um, yeah, family, spiritual growth, being a part of something, um, you know, being some, someone and a place to go for the community to serve others. It's a welcoming community. It's a place of Christians you know, acceptance. Well, it's the faith community. It's a group of people. St. Paul's is, is a dear home to us. You know, when we first moved here, we looked around and we chose St. Paul's and we've loved every minute of the 30 years that we've, we've almost been here 30 years now. We've never been in one place this long and we love being here. I, it's from the moment I walked in the doors in November of 2016, I felt welcomed, I felt at home. That has never changed, and I think that's so important because any, anybody is welcome. Everybody fits in. You know, going into this new chapter of our lives, I can get very uh, maudlin about world affairs and almost to the point of just becoming immobilized. And that's not the way I want to live my life, and I need help. Just to know that you're cared about, you're part of something larger you know, than yourself, and you can just really feel the love from everybody. This has been our church for a long time, over 50 years, so it's like home. And uh, it's been one of the most difficult things is not been able to be with people in church, in communion. Yeah. And because that's what we that's what Episcopalians are is we celebrate church together. It's how do you be the church outside the four walls and, and that's what we're trying to figure out and it's I think the most challenging thing is you lose connection with people um, particularly those who who may not know how to share with you that they're in need um, whereas at church they would come up to you or something so part of what I'm wondering is, is how do I do that? Uh, or how do I encourage people to text me or call me or email me or whatever and say, I, I need something, even if it's just prayer. The nature of community worship is, is that we keep coming back. And so, boy, I really like being here on Sundays at, in the sanctuary, in this new journey I'm on. I would miss it. I really do. You're not alone in this, and something I would say about St. Paul's that's been amazing through this whole thing is that, you know, throughout people have reached out to each other, there's been phone calls, there's been some social distance visits, um, you know, at the church there's been different memorials and things put up for, to, you know, to remember and to um, really just give attention to those who've, who've died of COVID-19, so, you know, just seeing that and having that has been has been amazing because you know you're not alone. We know that God's there. We know that Jesus is there. We're just having to learn how to do this in a way that still can be loving and caring and exciting and joyful. Um, and that's tough because folks in the church, we like our traditions. <laughs> and I love, I mean, I love the Episcopal Church and I love the smells and the bells and I love the music. Oh my gosh, I miss the music like everybody else. Um, but at the same time, I know that on Sunday morning that there are people all over the world gathered in prayer. Great news. We have made it easier than ever to be able to give online for your pledge or other contributions. Go to our website, stpaulslansing.org. Click on the online giving button on the upper right-hand side of your screen. You'll be sent to a secure page. All you have to do is put in how much you'd like to give and select what fund you'd like the gift to go into and insert your email and click continue. All you have to do is insert your payment information into the secure page. Don't have a computer? That's all right. You can give from the palm of your hand. Text St. Paul's e to 73256, followed by your gift amount. Again, text St. Paul's e to 73256 and your gift amount. And then just click on the link to finish. Thank you again for all your support.
Good morning, and thank you for joining me for um, service today. We celebrate Christ the King, which means it's the last Sunday of what we call the church year, and next week is Advent Rome. So I invite you to prepare yourself for worship by just taking a breath, allowing the spirit to fill your being from head to toe, remembering that we are joining thousands throughout this world in prayer. And let's begin. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts who was and is and is to come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now join me in our invitatory psalm, the Benighty. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with the song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson is a reading from the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost 
and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged. And I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now please join me in the canticle, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the prophets. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Please join me in the canical, you are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal father. All creation worships you. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only son, worthy of all worship and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people. 
bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us worth your saints to glory everlasting. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people, one from another, as a shepherd shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not, not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have preached on this passage from Matthew at least eight times in the last 25 years. So you wouldn't think it would catch me by surprise when it rolls around every three years, but it does every time. And after I read it, I, I stop and think, when did I, when didn't I? And then, well, there was the time when the guy was asking for a, a buck for a cup of coffee and I didn't give it to him as I thought it might be used for a different kind of beverage. And then there was the one who needed a new winter hat, but didn't like the one I gave him. It was the wrong color. Or there was the couple who let their board of water and light bill fall into arrears over $900 and wanted me to pay it off for them, which I didn't. And then there was a time when I paid a cabbie $100 to take a woman to a shelter in another county as she feared he would find her if she stayed in Lansing. And then there was a time I drove a young man home near Grand Rapids when his buddy had dumped him at the hospital and took off with his phone and wallet two days earlier. And so I wonder, am I a sheep or a goat? And then after sitting with this reading a bit longer, I realize it's not about me, not really. It's about surprises. And it is a bit of a finger wag at us. And it is about judgment. I know we don't like that, but it is. So if we look at the two groups, the sheep and the goats, both, both are shocked when Jesus either commends or condemns their behavior. You know, when did we, or when didn't we? They are surprised, not because they did or didn't feed the hungry or clothe the naked or care for the sick or visit the imprisoned. 
Notice that neither group denies their behavior or what they did or didn't do. They're surprised not because of any of this. What then surprises them? It's that the son of man was present. It never crossed any of their minds that God just might show up in those places and in the persons we least expect God to be. Both groups gave little thought to their treatment of the least of these. Both are surprised to discover that their actions or lack of action matters. Both, both groups gave no thought to their behavior, particularly towards the least of these, because you know what? These folks just didn't matter. But here's the next surprise. God regularly and reliably shows up in those to whom we give little thought, those whom we tend to disdain, and those who seem beyond the pale of our attention or good judgment. And so I wonder, I wonder why do we fail to see the face of Christ in the faces of the needy? Why? No one, not me, not you. We don't expect to see Jesus in the face of the disadvantaged, the poor, the imprisoned, and those who are in need. When we think of God, we, we think of power and glory and stained glass windows and might. We think of all knowing and all just and peace. And, and we think of the creator of the cosmos and the author of life. We think of Christ the King sitting on his throne attended to by angels. In this parable, we are told clearly and decisively, Jesus is with and for those who are in greatest need. And if we, if we want to experience God's presence fully, deeply, and truly, we better look for God in the need of those around us. And that's what takes us by surprise. That we just might find Christ by serving those with whom we disagree politically. That we might find Christ by serving those who we despise because of their actions. It surprises us that we might find Christ by serving those whom we've decided are not just acting in unloving ways, but are inherently unlovable and perhaps, well, irredeemable in our minds. Can God possibly be present among those we disregard or despise? Might God be surprising us by showing up where we least expect it? Might this day, when we celebrate Christ the King, might this day be the day we can imagine God's reign of judgment shaped by mercy includes those we are so sure are just plain wrong. We're not called to surrender our own convictions or quit working for our vision of God's justice. But we are called to work for justice while remembering God shows up on the side of those that the world has called unjust. We are to work for justice, but not despise those with a different view of justice. We are to work for peace while praying for those who disrupt it. We are to show mercy to the least of these, including showing mercy by considering the factors that have led persons with whom we disagree to their convictions. When I think of the depth and the width and the expansiveness and inclusiveness of God's love, I am so comforted by it. But I also find it very uncomfortable when I think this includes those whose views I find troubling or even threatening. Of course, forgetting that they may find my views equally unacceptable. I think the question this parable forces each one of us to answer is, who is left out of the reign of God? Or perhaps more to the point, who might we be leaving out of the reign of God's love?
And now for the judgment piece, I know I have to address it. This whole parable seems to reach its climax when the son of man who comes in glory sends the unrighteous to eternal fire. But when is this coming to glory? Well, the very next verse, 26.1, which we didn't read, offers us the clue. It says, when Jesus, Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days, the Passover is coming and the son of man will be handed over to be crucified. So could it be, could it be that the son of man comes in his glory in the crucifixion? And perhaps then, if that's true, judgment is not quite as frightening as we think. As long as we remember and trust that the one who will one day come to judge us is the same one who first came to be judged for us. That the one who came, the one who comes, and the one who is coming is undeniably and stubbornly for us and for all the world. So thanks be to God for the one who cares about the needs of all. Thanks be to God for the one who comes always in justice with mercy. Thanks be to God for the one who both judges and is judged for us. Thanks be to God for the one who meets us in the need of our neighbor. And thanks be to God for the one who works in us and through us in surprising and unexpected ways. And finally, how will I know I've made it into the sheep group? Well, I won't know, but I don't have to know because I trust Jesus is there and he is on everybody's side. And if anyone can sort it out, he can. Amen. Now let us join together in affirming our faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Mighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Prayers of the people. Through baptism, we have been raised with Christ, ordained to a royal priesthood, and made citizens in a holy nation. As faithful priests serving the King of Kings, let us intercede for all the world, saying, in the name of Jesus, our King, hear our prayer. Almighty God, enable us to live the good news convincingly that all may inherit life eternal in the kingdom of heaven. In the name of Jesus, our King, hear our prayer. Almighty God, make all the leaders of the nations to be proponents of peace and lovers of justice. Crown each ruler with compassion that all peoples may live in peace. We pray especially for our president and our president-elect. In the name of Jesus, our King, hear our prayer. Almighty God, look with pity on all who suffer, those with incurable diseases and those with COVID-19, those unjustly imprisoned, those denied dignity, those who are hungry and those without shelter, those who live without hope and those who have asked for our prayers on our parish prayer list and those we now name either silently or aloud. Direct us toward them that their royalty may be reclaimed and their lives celebrate your grace. In the name of Jesus, our King, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Bonnie, our bishop. Gather all who bear the name of Christ into one vigorous, fruitful community of faith, that the world may see one King of glory and one kingdom of grace. In the name of Jesus, our King, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for all your people gathered to seek your grace. By your mercy, prepare us for the day of judgment that we may accept it as a rich and royal gift for the eternal pleasure of the faithful. In the name of Jesus, our King, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for all who have died, especially Thomasina and Robert. May they rejoice as they gather in your heavenly banquet. In the name of Jesus, our King, Hear our prayer. Grant these petitions, O God, according to your perfect will, that your holy name be praised and proclaimed until that day when all the faithful shall gather before your throne in heaven through the merits of Christ the King. Amen. And now for our offertory, let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor unto the Lord. And our thanks to all for the continued financial support of St. Paul's and for your many gifts and blessings.
general thanksgiving. Accept, O Lord, our thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. We thank you for the splendor of the whole creation, for the beauty of this world, for the wonder of life, and for the mystery of love. We thank you for the blessing of family and friends, and for the loving care which surrounds us on every side. We thank you for setting us at tasks which demand our best efforts, and for leading us to accomplishments which satisfy and delight us. We thank you also for those disappointments and failures that lead us to acknowledge our dependence on you alone. Above all, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for the truth of his word and the example of his life, for his steadfast obedience by which he overcame temptation, for his dying through which he overcame death, and for his rising to life again, in which we are raised to the life of your kingdom. Grant us the gift of your spirit, that we may know Christ and make him known, and through him at all times and in all places, may give thanks to you in all things. Amen. And for announcements, I just want to wish everybody a happy, happy, happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe, eat lots, sleep lots, get rest but stay healthy. And if that means you're gonna be alone for Thanksgiving, then you're joining thousands and thousands of us. Um, so say your prayers, care for each other, but have a good Thanksgiving. We have much, much to give thanks for, despite the challenges of this year. Now, so remember that next Sunday we begin Advent one, which is the beginning of the church year. And so now for our dismissal. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus Christ, send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts and bring glory to your name. Amen. <laughs>